Today, we'll learn to use native code in Flutter. On native side we'll use Kotlin. In the demo, all the data processing is done on the native side. We'll learn to call native code from Flutter and we'll also send and receive data. On addition, I'll show you how you can create pop-up toast using Kotlin. So without any delay, let's learn this. First, we need to create project. So, open Visual Studio Code. Press F1 and type Flutter Project. Choose Empty Application. Choose the directory to place the project. Now name this app. Our project is created. Now, create a file inside lib folder to create main page. Inside this app, create a stateful widget and name it main page. Go to main file and set main page as your home page. Now start this project in the emulator. You can use your real device as I do most of times. Create scaffold widget inside main page. Create app bar. Set its title by passing text widget. Set background color. Set foreground color to change text color. Place the title in center by setting it to true. Now inside body, create center widget. Inside it, create column widget. Set main axis size to minimum. Create material button inside the column. Pass empty method to unpressed. Pass text widget to this button and set its title. Set background color of the button. Set text color to white. Use padding property to give some padding on vertical and horizontal sides. With this out basic design is complete. However, we'll keep changing it as we need later. Now we'll learn to call native code from Flutter side. For that, pass call native code method to unpressed property of the button. Now create variable name channel and set it equal to method channel and pass channel name in string format to this method channel. Now create a method of return type future void. Name it call native code and make it async method. Inside this method, create try catch block to avoid app crashes. Inside try block, call method from channel variable named invoke method and pass method name to call to this method in string format. Now right click on Android folder and open it inside Android Studio. Wait for few moments till Android scans all files. Process is completed. Open Kotlin plus Java folder. Open the folder which ends with your app name and open main activity file. Now, add curly brackets in front of this class. This is Kotlin file so we'll write Kotlin code here. Inside this class, create a private variable named channel, set it equal to name of the method channel which you passed in Flutter. Pass in string format. Remember that both names must be same. Now we need to override a method. So, type override fun configure and choose this configure flutter engine method. Inside this method, use method channel method and also import its library. Create variable named method and set it equal to this method channel. Now pass flutter engine .binary messenger as parameter, also pass channel name to this method. Now use method variable and call this set method call handler method which contains this call and result parameters. Inside this method, use if statement and check if call.method is equal to method name which we tried to invoke from Flutter. Inside this if statement, use toast.make text method. Pass this as context this method, then pass the text to display in the toast, then pass toast.length long. After that use dot show method to show this toast. As we have made changes in main activity file, we need to close the app and then restart it again. App is up and running, so, let's test it out. And Toast is showing on the screen with same text which we passed. 
Now we'll learn to get data from native code. For that, open Android Studio. Create a variable named username inside if statement, and set it equal to a string. Inside toast, use this variable instead of this string. To return data, use result.success method. It can return any type of data. We'll return this username string. Now create else block. Inside it, use result.notImplemented method. Now go to Flutter side and open main page. Here, create a string variable named result text and initialize it with empty string. Inside this method, set this result text equal to channel.invoke method. Now, create a sized box widget under this button and give it some height to create some spacing. Under it, create text widget and pass it result text variable. Use set state method here because we want to rebuild the UI after invoking this method. Now, close the app and restart it again. App is running. Let's test it now. Text is being displayed which means our code is working perfectly and data is being transmitted successfully. Now, we'll learn to send data to native methods. For that, open main page. Create padding widget inside the column and give some horizontal padding. Inside it, create a text field. Create controller property. Now, go up and create a text editing controller. I'll name it text editing controller and initialize it. Now, override the dispose method and dispose text editing controller inside it using dispose method. Now, provide this controller to this controller property. Create size box and give some height to create some spacing. Use decoration property of text field and pass input decoration to it. Inside it, use label text property to set label of the text field. Now, add parameter of string type named username to this call native code method. Now, pass a method to this on pressed property of the button. Inside it, invoke the call native code method and pass username variable. Now create string type variable named username and set it equal to text of text editing controller. Now I'll use if statement and check if username is empty and inside it, set username equal to a string. As you can see that, this invoke method take method name and arguments. So, we'll pass username as argument using this method. But we need to pass data in map data type or in key value pairs. So, I'll pass it like this. Now, go to Android Studio. Remove this string and use call.argument method instead. Use string as we are passing string data type. Also pass the key of data that we pass inside the invoke method. Sorry, I used arguments instead of argument. Now, close the app and restart it again. App is running. Let's test it out. As you can see, data is being transmitted successfully. We are sending and receiving data at same time without any problem. This is how you can send and receive data. We showed a simple example to show you the process. You can use methods and classes inside native code to handle complex functionalities. With that this video comes to an end. Thanks for watching.